What's up guys, Ryan from Manscapes. In today's video, we have got me moving the Campanota Slash Naperda into their new cell. I did say I was going to be doing this a while ago. However, obviously with me being busy. So it's going to be a short video today. I'm kind of more showing how I get them from the natural nest into the new one. Um, it has worked. It's not the, pr the best method I use. I will explain throughout the video certain methods that you can use which will benefit you or depending on what you're moving into certain setups. Every situation differs depending on the size of the setup or the new scape and also at the same time what they're currently in as well. If I had them in a Venus nest, then I could have just placed a Venus nest inside the setup. Uh, you know, because I have them in a high tech ants outworld, that means that the size of the outworld as well is quite large comparable to the size. So once scaped, it would obviously push against the lid, meaning either way, I couldn't really get them to move out of it. In hindsight, I should have really took the actual nest apart or took things off the nest myself, like the walls of it that could just be Allen keyed off. And I, it was only afterwards I realised that I could actually Allen key the um, setup away from itself, which I should have done. But either way, you know, we got there, the colony's happy, they're doing great now. Um, I'm starting to actually to this day to see more activity than ever and um, with these ladies you know it's um, it's a very slow progressive sort of video and you know there's not going to be a huge amount of footage today I did just want to update these ladies and get out but either way I hope you enjoy the video and as always from me peace and love I'm out So those of you who don't know, this is the nest they're in at the moment or were in before I made the natural setup. It was just a high tech ant outworld with some cocoa fiber and sand and some leaf litter. I had springtails and isopods in there and that was literally as basic as it got. That's all I had inside. It was working really, really well for these. I did have them in the uh, acrylic nest and I noticed that they weren't liking it whatsoever. Um, I noticed a change in the mood. I, I just, I had to put them in this and it, you know, they, it, they really did thrive from this little um, mini natural outworld we'll say this is the setup i start to add them one by one all i'm doing is taking the soil out with a spoon i place them inside a tub buried the tub and just started to layer that soil down into the tub whilst fil filtering out all the workers you can see this soil is just alive though you can see all those springtails in there and the isopods running around um so yeah it's really really good to know that the soil was going this well there is better methods to do this I mean, I could have took the Allen keys out as previously mentioned and then placed the base inside the setup. That would have worked. And they would have had to have come out anyway because it had been too bright. It would have naturally just went down into the soil. The other alternative is I also could have got the setup if it was a slightly larger tank and just placed the outworld in the setup and took off the actual um, the dividers where the you know you can add extra outworld, extra nests, etc. Or like, you know, your portways or your, I don't know what they call them in acrylic nests. I don't use them enough to know, but I could have essentially just took those off and placed in. Same if you had them in a Venus nest, same if you had them in a Ferrero Rocher tub, it's all the same. If I had them in the tubs and, tubs and tubes, again, you could just place that inside and it will naturally move out. As long as you're not watering the setup they're in, you know, and you're having them, um, and even if you filter out a small amount of soil and place that in the setup. But this way was a lot harder. I then had to take all the soil out individually, place them all in, gave them a cricket, and on the time lapse, time lapse you can see that there's not a massive amount of activity in the soil. I can't quite tell where they've moved in, where they're moving in. I did, uh, you know, time lapses for a few hours a day over the course of three or four days, and I couldn't tell where they were moving in. But these ants are stunning. I really, really, really like these ants and I think I kind of did have a knock-on effect of the way I added them in that I was filtering them out individually and then I had to get the queen out myself, you know, um, on the spoon with the soil. I was obviously very gentle and placed her in the setup. I think it did disturb them too much and I did have a knock-on effect for around a month or two and these ladies weren't coming out that much they weren't really exploring um a little bit nervous and obviously that's for me a, a huge worry i think the um the setup was too humid i have made sure that the um, humidity in the tank is low now and they seem to be thriving in that lesser humid condition I'm still feeding these sugars and proteins every single week. When I water it down every week as well, that's where they'll be getting the water from. I also do keep a test tube in there with some water inside so they always have access to water if they need it. 
Ordinarily, I don't do that for setups, but with this one, the camper notice I am. I also do it with the Chromatogaster, purely because they are an arid species or prefer arid environments. That was a before, and that's it now. It's gone bonkers. But either way, it was only a short update today. I will be updating these ladies again. You're probably talking two or three months down the line. There's just such a slow species. But either way, I hope you liked the video. And remember, drop a like, subscribe. But as always from me, peace and love. I'm out.